everyone, it's Emily, and it has occurred to me that perhaps you would like to come along with me a few days a week when I harvest and do some chores, and then I can just chat a bit. I can chat and give you some more tips and information while I go about my work. Now, I don't know everything, but I know a lot. This is our second ripe pepper. Red pepper, just in case you didn't know, because I didn't know this for years. Green peppers are unripe peppers. I don't think there's any variety of bell pepper that's supposed to be green when it's ripe. There are varieties that are supposed to be brown and even purple. And in the store, of course, you'll see yellow, orange, and red. But green peppers are unripe. That is why they do not taste as sweet. That is why they are less expensive. Because, you know, the longer the peppers sit on the plant ripening, the bigger chance there is that something is going to get to it. So yeah, the ripe ones are more expensive. And by the way, it is Monday. What is it? Monday, July 20... What did we say? I forgot. July something. July 23rd or 4th. Alright, it is later in the day, getting toward evening. It must be close to 100 degrees. And I am digging out a potato or two, depending on their size. Um, you might notice the lack of plants. That's because they developed blight pretty early on. And I'm going to be having a video about that a little bit later. Oh, Rick. Ha <laughs> ha. Decent size. <laughs> but there were plants. Um, that's another one. There were plants, you know, planted. All I spaced them about, I don't know how, <laughs> actually. Probably eight inches apart, I buried the potatoes in this mulch way back in spring. Okay, that'll do me for now. Now see my Eva purple bug had, had a flying person come in and taste a tomato. It's bound to happen. But that's one reason to pick some. I'm going to go ahead and pick a few. They're not quite ripe, but I don't want a lot of this happening, you know? So I'm going to pick a few. I think so. And, well, that has a bad spot, doesn't it? Eh, that has a bad spot. I'll leave it. But these aren't cracked, so they might ripen nicely in the house, right? Theoretically. Because the ones that I've picked from the tomatoes in the ground, that are growing in the ground, are cracked. Hmm. Well, now we're learning something, aren't we? There's something to these hybrid, high-raised lasagna beds. Maybe we produce better and healthier produce. Hmm. 
I'm not going to ask my husband to build more, though. It takes a long time. <laughs> I mean, not to build these beds, but it takes a long time to get them full. Or it would take tons of money to buy potting, potting soil in our area. You cannot, there is no place where you can buy really good quality potting soil. So, ah, uh, yeah. I, I want to let the, as many tomatoes as possible ripen on the vine. So, I'll just stick with that. Let's just get some you know, today's cucumber. That one looks like it's gotten big. Yep. Uh, that's kind of like a smoothie cucumber. That's gotten a bit fat. The fatter they are, the really the less flavorful they are. See, it, they kind of all grew at once, so I've got them all. Ah. I'm holding the camera with one hand and trying to take the cucumber off with the other. And I've got a, a cucumber inside, too, that I picked yesterday that wasn't eaten because we had other things to eat. But I don't want these guys to get super. That look at the dill is going to seed already. It almost surprises me how quickly dill goes to seed. What are you going to do about it? Making sure there aren't any guys height. Well, there's a smaller one. You know what? I'm going to pick a smaller one just because. Just because. Let's see. There's, <laughs> there's a couple of bigger ones. Ow. I got a, um, one of these thorny things stuck in my thumb. So it's always good to wash them underwater and then that doesn't happen. Okay, well, that is enough for today. I may get more tomatoes later from the in-ground plants, I'm not sure, but that's that's all the beans I'm going to pick and that's plenty of cucumbers for us today. Alright, well, I'll see you the next time I decide to pick up the camera. It's Tuesday morning. No, it's not. Yesterday was Tuesday. It's Wednesday morning. June, Ju Boy, I want it to be June, huh? It's Tuesday, July 26 now. I was hoping to get out here before um, all the insects started making noise, but it might be too late. I'll see if I have to reduce noise. If my voice sounds um, a bit distorted, it's because I had to reduce the insect noise. So y'all can hear me. What I'm doing right now is pulling up purslane that's pretty much no good anymore. I suppose the stems are edible too, but I haven't been watering them. Check them out. They're naked. At first I thought it was grasshoppers, but I think maybe the cabbage moths were frustrated because they had nowhere to lay their, they had no brassicas on which to lay their eggs. So they decided, oh, we'll do it on the purslane side little cabbage worms eating up the purslane, I think is what happened. So I'm going to chat with you all for just a few minutes while I do a bit of weeding because these are just ugly now. I had intended to put them in salads and smoothies, and I did it once. <laughs> and I, you know, I kept intending, I kept telling myself, oh, you need to, but I kept forgetting. But I basically let, I let some purslane grow um, in places where I'm, where other things, you know, where garden crops aren't growing just because an emergency, you know, in case we needed a, a source of our own greens. They're not any good now, though. <laughs> There's some wood sorrel that hasn't been eaten, though. But, you know, that's got to go up with purslane. Wow, I might need two hands to do this. But what I want to chat with y'all about is spraying fungicides. I had said at the beginning of spring that um, I was determined to commit to a spraying schedule and I was going to do it this year and see how it fared. Well, spraying consistently did not work for the sugar snap peas, which is my first clue. And then I started noticing disease on my tomato, even though I've been spraying, oh, sorry, and the cucumber. Um, 
so I'm going to skip a whole bunch of, just a whole bunch of stuff and get, just get down to brass tacks. I don't need to spray and I don't want to spray. Therefore, I'm not going to spray. That's number one. The produce that I grow in the summer, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, melons, the things that typically and you know always get a disease. I don't I don't I only I will dehydrate slash freeze um, some of the um, extra pepper and tomato, but I do not can and I don't do it because I want to make sure I have two years or even one year worth of produce just in case I can't garden the next year. That's not the way I roll. They're not high calorie foods, none of those. And I can grow sweet potatoes and potatoes even if they get, um, if the potatoes get blighted, I'll still end up with some roots. Um, the high, so the high carb crops are generally relatively easy to grow. So the summer fruits I grow because partly the nutrition, probably more in part because of the taste, you know, the flavor of homegrown, and they're practically free. Once you get them going, they're way less expensive than buying them in the store. This is just hard for me to do with one hand. Okay. So... It doesn't matter to me if the peppers or tomatoes or cucumbers don't last the entire season. It's fine. Actually, we're already sick. Well, I am. I think my husband might, might be too. We're already pretty much sick of cucumbers. We eat cucumbers every day for a month, and then we're done. It's like, okay, the plant can die now. All right. So that's number one. I don't, there's, I, I have no compelling need for the plants to last forever. So it's okay if they get diseased. Oh, I did it. I'll put these um, in the bed where I want to compost later. All right, there's another big one over there. Um, number two is... Before you get in the comment section and talk to me about the health of my soil or that I'm doing something else wrong, blah, 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 I want you to call our county extension agent like I did last summer. I was specifically asking him about fruit trees, which he pretty much laughed at me. <laughs> he pretty much confirmed, no, you can't grow fruit where we live. Our area, we live in a mountainous area that is landlocked, okay, we are far away from an ocean, we are landlocked, the average annual humidity is 74%, and most of that, I think, is in the summer, or at least, you know, at least half the days that happens is in the summer, we're very humid in the winter too, and speaking of winter, we have mild winters, we do not get as cold as North Carolina, and Virginia, and Tennessee, and Maryland, where you, where you see the other, um, uh, YouTube gardeners. Our climate is not the same. There, there's the South and then there's the South. And to me, people who live in Maryland and North Carolina are, are, are that's like the quasi South. You know, it's kind of like the Northern South. But, oh, okay, now that hurt my arm. I'm going to have to get that later with my other gloves. But, um, yeah, basically, the man that I spoke to, and he's been, you know, doing his job for decades here in southeast Oklahoma. He knows, okay? Basically, he said that um, crops like tomatoes, cucumbers, they are, they are going to get diseased no matter how much you spray, no matter what you spray it with, whether it is conventional, 
synthetic or a natural spray. They are eventually going to get disease. That is just, it's because of our climate. The native vegetation here, ladies and gentlemen, gets diseased every summer. The trees, the weeds, and anthracnose all over the garden. I see anthracnose on, on weeds that are growing. The cucumber I, I said in my um, July update hadn't got powdery mildew yet, but check that out. That is powdery mildew to the hilt. So it's got two kinds of um, fungi on it right now. <laughs> but I'm okay. And you know, who wants to spray? If you want to, if you want to prevent, if you want to even just try to slow down disease on um, a cucumber or a melon, you have to spray the underside of leaves. Now look at this plant. Imagine how long it would take to spray the underside of each leaf. How much hydrogen peroxide or neem oil or even conventional? Okay, why would a person want to do that when they're number one sick of eating the fruit <laughs> and number two they don't need it for any other reason. They're not trying to sell it. They're not trying to pickle it. So what I, I say all this to say, okay, I have over a decade of gardening experience. Less here, okay, we've been here nine and a half years. Uh-oh, another. I better pick some of these tomatoes. That one got tasted. Um... I know what I'm doing, and I'm making the decision that is the least stressful for me not to spray. I'm looking for hornworms. Did I say that? I'm trying to see if I can find any other hornworms than those that I showed you all in the video yesterday. A hornworm has obviously been here. Did I pick a hornworm off this plant? I can't remember, because all four of those hornworms came off of a different tomato plant. But anyway, you do you. You do whatever you want to do to help whatever crops you want to survive, survive. You do you. You do whatever you feel like you need or want to do. And please let me be me. Let me do me. And, yeah, I am just, I am not, I don't, I don't care to be out in the hot and humid summer climate to spray. And I have other, I have lots of other things to do, like pruning tomatoes. These are already needing to be pruned again. After prune tomatoes, look for hornworms, do a little bit of weeding and, of course, watering. That all takes a good bit of time, and I need to, oh, man. Someone was trying to eat the green tomatoes. They must be southern. I have southern birds if they're eating the green tomatoes. Dude, there's probably a young bird who didn't know any better. But anywho, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I, I have, I stopped out there. Look, there's one anyway. Look at that. Look at him. I'm usually not wearing gloves, by the way, when I take these guys off. I know that, that's, um, that grosses some of you out but you know what you get used to it. it grossed me out when i first started but you get used to it <laughs> that's not a deal it's not a big deal anymore i'll bet there's more than this guy but i need to get in and get breakfast going for the fam so i look 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 uh-huh you just think so what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> I'm hungry, let me eat. Smart Alec hornworms. Talk back all the time. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'm, I'm going to just wrap, wrap up this week's um, vlog, garden vlog, even though it's been only three days long. It's, that's, it's long enough. Right, there's my other glove. You know what? I'm just going to leave it here and remember to get that purse signed maybe when I hang out the laundry. 
But yeah, look, he's trying to climb, <laughs> crawl up me. Anyway, that's a, like I said, we've we've gone on long enough for this vlog, and you've had a taste of how, what I need to do in the garden. So I'll do another two, three, four day vlog next week for y'all. All right, well, gonna put run these to the woods real quick. Thanks a lot for watching. Thumbs up if you like this video. Share it with your gardening friends. Subscribe for gardening tips. And in the meantime, while you're waiting for the next video, hopefully not with any hornworms, happy gardening.